Thanks, everybody. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Camilleri. Uh, you loved our next guest in True Blood, X-Men, the 25th Hour, Margaret, Fly Away Home, The Piano. She's been so good and so many amazing things. Now you can see the great Anna Paquin in the new pop TV series, Flack, where she plays a celebrity publicist that's able to handle everyone else's flaws but her own. Let's take a look. Everybody, put your hands together for the great Anna Paquin. Hi. Hi. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, congratulations on this show. It's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so um, much. It is one of those shows, I will say, it started, and I was like, okay, celebrity publicist, this is going to be, I sort of have an idea as to what it's going to be, and then all of a sudden, the writing is amazing, and the yes. performance is fantastic. Oh, thank you. And it's a completely different kind of show in a way than the setup, even though it still fulfills all of the things that the setup kind of requires. Does that yes. make sense? Yes, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, but yes, on our side is that we have a brilliant writer, uh, Ollie Lansley, who wrote all six of our scripts, wow. who just has this crazy, amazing, devious mind and just writes so beautifully. And the ability to <laughs> probe deeper. Yes. Like a scene doesn't need to be as good as it is because the setup is always kind of like... Yeah, he okay. doesn't allow the the convention or the sort of the glossiness of the world yeah. to do all the work. He, that, you know, he takes the least lazy option possible, which is still writing the hell out of every single scene and just, you know, giving us beautiful, crazy, weird, dark, funny, smart material to work with. It's, Absolutely. It's the, just so much fun. The first idea is never enough with the show, which <laughs> is a great part of it. So talk to me about what you thought when you first got the script, because I imagine they gave you the script, told you what the idea was, but then you read it. So well, that so here's process. the thing is um, I actually tend not to ask too many questions about scripts before I read them because I like to just, you know, know, just sort of experience it uh, sort of fresh. Um, but I have a company with my husband, um, and so we get sent material all the time for development. And usually it's with one of us to be in it or for him to direct it or, you know, some kind of combination thereof. Um, and I didn't actually know what to expect. And this just literally grabbed me from the opening sort of moments of the first scene of the first episode and didn't let go for the entire time. I mean, three, I think there were about three scripts written by the time they came to us. So it was pretty well developed and the rest of the season had been mapped out pretty well. And it was one of those ones where I was like, I read all three and I was like, what do you mean? There's no more yet? <laughs> Hurry up. Yeah, watching it is kind of like, <laughs> I was like that I too. Need, I need more now. So for you guys, when it comes to developing a project, do you mostly look for things that don't require, that already kind of come fully built, and then your, develop, your process becomes getting it made rather than sort of developing the characters in the story? Well, we have both. We have things that are in various stages of readiness to go to, go to camera. Uh, it's really lovely when material lands on your lap that's incredibly well-formed and doesn't need massive amounts of, you know, rolling up your sleeves and figuring out how to make it work. It's nice when something works already. That said, it's also fun to build something from scratch. Um, and we have a few things on our slate that are things we are, we have conceived of or you know, friends of ours have that we are developing from the absolute ground floor. And there's also something exciting about that too. You know, wow. um, That must be so amazing to be able to do that at this point of your, in your career after having been a vessel for everybody else's work since you were nine, yeah, 10? Yeah, nine. So when did you when when what did it feel like for you when you were finally like wow I can do this I can build my own content I mean for lack was, of a better word <laughs> it's it was exciting and also you know it was sort of halfway through doing True Blood um, Steve and I and our friends uh, Mark and Cerise Larkin who are the other half of our company um, and I had sort of been talking about you know ideas and things that we that we loved and we had so much in common taste wise and that we were just like well why don't we make our own stuff why don't we work with each other and find our own material or build things from scratch. And also the thing of working with good, nice people, which is <laughs> underrated sometimes. It's like, we don't need to work with people that are unpleasant. We yeah. can surround ourselves by talented, interesting, creative people who we also personally like. And that's the other fun of being a producer is you get to pick the team. Which I, th I think it's easier said than done to do that because it is quite hard to get stuff made. There's a lot of pressure oh, on creative. absolutely. And that gets to a lot of people's heads, and I don't, that is not in any Look, way... I mean, everybody, you know, pr no production is without its tensions. <laughs> yeah. But it's nice when you at least start with a group of people that all really get along 
and all are really on the same page. Who don't are, want tensions. Who don't want tensions. Right. We're like kind of the goal is for it not to be tense. Yeah. <laughs> Can we talk about this character? I feel like this character, I mean, you are an incredibly versatile actress. Thank you. You've done so many amazing things, but this character also within minutes, I was like, oh, this is a great Anna Paquin character. Well, thank you. Like, I could see someone writing this and be like, there's nobody else that should do this other than Anna Paquin. You're just very, very good at these kinds of, of women, I think. And what kind of woman is that, out of curiosity? In your I know, I, look, I know I was putting myself in the shit on this <laughs> no, one. No, it's fine. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just curious. I don't want to put words in your mouth. No, I'll keep digging. I'll keep digging. Don't worry. Uh, I th she's, she's, she's flawed. She's strong. Yes. She has, I think, she has, like, addiction issues. Yes. She uh, Of all different sorts. Oh, yes. And she's also struggling to sort of remain in power with herself mm -hmm. and around those around her, but she's, in general, a good person. And I yes. think, I mean, my favorite yes. role of yours of all time, I've told you this before, is Margaret. Thank you. And ver Margaret could very much be the teenager of this character. That is a, a really good call, actually. Um I mean, I had not thought of that previously, but yes, there are there are aspects of um, of that of Robin's personality that could uh, certainly have come from very different kind of writing, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, Lisa, who's the character in Margaret, has a very privileged upbringing and is sort of drowning in her own boredom from privilege, yeah. whereas <laughs> Robin, That's a good way to put it, <laughs> but she is, you know, um, whereas Robin has had to be a fighter and a scrapper and sort of make herself from the ground up without really any help from anyone ever. How hard is it to find uh, characters like this? It's pretty hard. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's not that many uh, amazing scripts with incredibly flawed, interesting, complicated female protagonists just kind of lying around. I mean, that's part of the reason that uh, I started producing my own things was that, you know, it's, it's easier to sort of source the material before it's already belongs to somebody else. I think, I mean, it's not even just, I mean, yes, of course, flawed female protagonists, but I think flawed characters in general are so hard because more often than not, readers and producers are not comfortable with flawed characters. Yeah. Very quickly, they're like, sure. I don't like anybody in this. So. Yeah, the, the whole is, are they likable yeah. thing, which is just not to me really an interesting note or question. It's so like, boring. Well, like likable, like it all comes down to being likable and that's a binary concept. I mean, oh gosh, how dull. And also like I'm watching television, which is story, story, story. Well. Yeah, like they need to be unlikable to do all of the things that a TV show requires of them to do in pretty each much. episode. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. Yeah. So when you're when you're hunting for work like this, what is your what do you want your job to be as a, as an executive producer? What do I want it to be? I mean, ideally, every script would be as well written as the scripts for Flack, um, and by the time we're done with them, hopefully they all are, on every job ever. Um, but you know, for me, it always starts with material, really, um, because to get anything produced. You have to work so hard and for so long that if you don't ultimately really believe in your material and don't really love what you're, the, the substance of what you're doing, I mean, I, I just feel like that would be a little soul destroying um, and just not worth it. How excited were your publicists for you to do this show? Incredibly thrilled, obviously. Well, but because you're playing a publicist, yeah. Yes, I mean, oh. I look, I, I have not, I've been asked, like, have I flat out said, what do you think of it? I don't ask questions that I don't want completely honest <laughs> answers to. Well, they're also not going to give you an honest answer. <laughs> but also, they're publicists, so why, you know. Um, but also, the, the world of publicity that I have existed in is very different from the world of yeah. publicity that Robin She is like in. crisis publicity. Yeah, but also for celebrities that are maybe not so much on the substance and are a little more so on the fame for fame's sake. Yeah. Well, that second episode is pretty brutal yeah. in some ways, which is a place that I did not expect this series to go. And that is a great question of likability. You know, yeah. that is the kind of thing where it's like, all of you have to be on the same page as mm -hmm. to how you're going to do this mm -hmm. because anybody else from the outside would probably read that and go, I don't, what, what, how are we going to make this work? Yeah. I mean, yes. I mean, it's, you, you do have to all be on the same page. We, we're very lucky in that um, we're 
produced by, or the two networks we were working with um, is Pop TV here in America and UK TV over in the UK, obviously. Uh, and they are both new enough and young enough networks that they were wanting to take a, a ride into more interesting, darker, weirder, uh, more sort of raw material with us. Yeah. And also were, had the faith in us to put the sort of creative control in the hands of the creative people which is kind of unheard of in television and such a joy. And we're so lucky. Do you not have that kind of freedom in other projects that you're developing in different places? Mm, it depends. It kind of depends who's paying the bills. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that's like, what I mean, yeah. And so, do you have to sort of work out as producers? Yeah, absolutely. How so to, to what extent you have control is kind of depending on how much control you get given by the person writing the check, to be completely blunt. Yeah. Um, and with a film... Generally, whoever is financing it has already signed off on the script as as it is. You, you know? would hope. You would hope. Well, that's been my experience so far as a producer. Um, but with indie films, I mean, which is what we've done so far, uh, that's just kind of the way it is. Um, there haven't been any strange requests from you know financiers. But on TV, obviously, because you know there's multiple episodes, you do always kind of have that slightly lurking fear of are they going to watch the first you know, a few sort of rounds of dailies and go, ooh, okay, a little too dark, a little too much, and start to get you to have to, you know, wind it back. And luckily that didn't happen. Do you prefer, I mean, you do have a, I would say, a history of playing pretty dark characters. Yes. Is that, when did you start to recognize as an actress or as a person that your tastes sort of lended themselves or were more, leaned more towards I mean, kind dark of always, places? Kind of always. I've, I guess the piano, your first I mean, movie. I mean, that wasn't material I, like, you know, picked. So they picked yeah. me. But I never really, I've, I've done, like, maybe two movies ever that weren't kind of dark. And one was The Thing with the Geese when I was 12. And even that starts with a dead mother. I mean, it's not, you know... It's it's pretty sad for a kid's film. When I was watching this last night, my partner told me that when she saw the Geese film, when she was a little girl, mm -hmm. she dressed like your character for two years afterwards. Oh, dear God. And I was like, well, thank God we didn't know each other then. That would have been really awkward <laughs> yeah. if you had. <laughs> but for the but most... Also because you would have been 12 and... I, never mind. Yes, of, yes. Yeah. Uh, but for the, So for the most part, you have always tended towards pretty dark fare. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It have you ever questioned that or thought about that? Or is that just like what you like and what you watch and what you do? I mean, questioned it? No, it's just what I like. You know, I, uh, I don't gravitate towards really super fluffy, light content. You know, you may think that listening to Serial Killer podcasts is like a weird way to chill out or go to sleep. I oh, find it really relaxing. I don't think it's weird. It's okay, pretty good. much up my alley. Okay, yeah. good. I have we a, can be friends. A deep history of web searching serial killers mm -hmm. all the yeah, time. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, like, I. <laughs> and I just discovered podcasts like about three months ago because I'm. I've been living under a rock, apparently. Um, yeah. So, no, I, I. My taste has always skewed a little. Uh, a little dark. So you're watching the Bundy tapes recently, and oh, I've seen all of them. I see all of them as soon or listen, hear, listen to the ones when they, you know, that are on audio tape or whatever, audiobook. <laughs> oh yeah. That's all your that, that's your means of relaxation. Absolutely. Like you're having a stressful day, you come home, like just leave me alone. I'm just gonna listen to this thing about how he dismembered them. Leave yes. <laughs> what is that weird? <laughs> There you Good. go, right Thank there. You. You've, got, you've got a friend in arms awesome. over here. Uh, you and your husband uh, produced a movie that he directed yep. not too long. When is that coming out? When um, when will we, we see that? Well, we're still doing the festival circuit right now. Mm -hmm. um, we do have very, very soon to be announced very exciting news about distribution, but I can't quite talk about that yet. Of course. That's amazing, yeah. though. Uh, so title of the movie soon. It's called The Parting Glass. Right. Um, it's a very sweet but rather dark, um, sad, yet slightly uplifting story about a family coming together in the wake of uh, one of a grown-up sister's suicide. Uh, it's written by Dennis O'Hare. That's right. I was going to say, yeah. is it written by, but I, I wasn't exactly yeah, sure. Dennis yeah, Dennis O'Hare, who we worked with on True Blood and who's just amazing. And he's he he's the lead in it, and it's about his family, actually, and his sister, who... Uh, Really? Unfortunately, yeah. And are you in it? I play the sister. You that, play the sister. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Your attention towards dark. Roles. I mean, you know, the life chose me. <laughs> 
How did um how did you and your production have it go about casting all of these uh, British actors and actresses that are in the well, show? Well, I mean, you have casting directors. Okay, great. Um, Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> but also, some of them were people we personally knew. I mean, my husband's English. My the rest of our company are they're both English. Okay. Um, I'm the token not English, not actually even American, but um, I guess the token Kiwi. But so they knew loads of people as well. Um, but you know, like like. <laughs> with most things we do, we can kind of be like, oh, you know so-and-so who knows so-and-so. Can you get his email for me? <laughs> that is producing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, why why not work work the angles that you've got? <laughs> Makes it easier. Um, what was it that, uh, how long were you in the UK while you were shooting it? Well, I was there for all of prep and then all of post. So collectively it was about four five months or about three months, I think, of shooting. Wow. And, yeah. And did you guys sort of just pick up the whole family and move over there for yeah. the shoot? Wow. Yeah. That's pretty incredible. I mean, what did your what did, what did your kid think of uh, of the UK? Well, my husband's English, so we spend a lot of time there, and we have a house in London. So, um, And all of my in-laws and his extended family are all there. So, so you're it's there kind pretty of, regularly? Yeah. So it's um, it's one of, one of the places that they feel like is home. What is your favorite part about playing this character? She's not apologizing for her behavior. And we as a show are not apologizing for it or trying to sort of ju rationalize or justify it. it. She just is. And there's something about that that I just find really refreshing. That's it. She is trying to get a handle on her behavior, though, mm -hmm. which I thought was... No, she is. She's a work in progress, and she knows that she has problems, you know? And she knows that she... She does, some, she does some horrible things. But underneath it all, she isn't actually a horrible person. She's just a really damaged person. You know, and I think that's something that a lot of us can relate to. Yeah, I love the relationship that she has with her sister mm. and a line that was specifically said in the second episode where she says, I'm trying to be better. I think something along those yeah. lines. And her sister essentially says, I know, and pats her on the back. And it's this sort of really beautiful, real moment that yeah. I think lots of people who are works in progress, who, yeah. who are trying to recover well, aren't from Aren't we all themselves. kind of a work in progress? You know, she yeah. just does it in quite a... Extreme way. Quite an extreme way, which right. certainly makes for interesting television. Yeah, absolutely. We are all works in progress. Whether it's, whether it's you get jealous or angry about minor things mm -hmm. and you say, I'm sorry, I know I would work on this, but mm -hmm. I'm having trouble right now. Or you do the type of things that, yeah. that she does. Are you interested, when we say dark things, are you also interested in, like, extremities and characters who go to extremes? I mean, I guess so. You listen to Serial Killer Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> you should play a, fem a female serial killer. I mean, if someone writes one for me, yes, sure. Check. Check. <laughs> I was like, it's, that would be on my, you know, on my list of things I haven't done yet, so... I mean, we've really only gotten one female serial killer movie in, in the history of movies, as far as I can think of. The Eileen Ware, the Well, there's monster. not a lot of female serial killers. But we can make up a fictional one. I know, I'm one. just saying, like, that's probably why there's not an abundance of women in that genre. Yeah, women just don't have that, I mean, I guess that weird thing. That awful thing. <laughs> <laughs> Did I just blow the interview, guys? Sounds good. Okay, great. <laughs> you made a look, you were like, oh, you're in shit now, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were saying women are nice, right? Women are great. What the hell? But they're better than serial killers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that we've set the bar so low yeah. that being better than serial killers is, makes you nice. I don't feel good about this interview. I, I feel great usually about much it. better at this I than think, I am. I, I feel great about it. Also, now someone's going to watch this and write me a really wonderful movie about a serial killer. And write me some really angry tweets. That are, like you said, a really low bar for women, Ricky. <laughs> you didn't mean it like that. Thank I you tell. so much, Anna Peck, <laughs> for clarifying for me. <laughs> um, I love the show uh, so much. I, I love all of your performances. Your career over the years has just been so wonderful to watch. You always take incredible chances and risks that I think most people aren't willing to do now uh, as a producer and not just an actress. The, Thank you. The show premieres tomorrow night uh, at 10 p.m. on Pop. It does. It is wonderful. Everybody Thank give a so huge much. round of applause for the great Anna Paquin. <laughs> Thank you.